So, because we are, we are true scientists over here on the Story Ranger channel, we gotta label our specimens and we gotta try a range of materials. So, first of all, how exciting! Yes. Oh, it's the good, it's the good adhesive. It's the good stuff. <gasps> stickers! I didn't know I'd get stickers. So cute! Thanks! Ah, oh, that's so nice! Alright. So we have White 2.0 Beta Batch Beta 3, White 2.0 Beta Batch Beta 1, and Batch Beta 2. Test each strain, add max self-expression, await email questionnaire. Do not eat it, drink it, get it in your eyes, tattoo or paint your body, apply to hot surfaces. Do shake well before use, keep out of reach of kids and animals, store at room temperature, wash brushes with water. Okay. I guess. That means we need brushes. Ah, I've got my lovely Mexican luchador mug that my teacher gave me in Languages, Literatures, and Cultures. Okay, we'll start with the sketchbook, I think. So just regular Michael's 1099 sketchbook. It's their like essentials collection. So let's label it this. Segmented. So, things like this. This is going to be one, this is going to be two, this is going to be three. This is a lot thicker. Does that mean I didn't mix it well enough? No, I think I think it's just more viscous. We'll see how that plays out. Oh 
Oh my goodness. So, so far all three have very different viscosities. I don't, I don't know how that's going to affect things, really. Because, I mean, I guess if you're a painter who doesn't like a specific viscosity, you can always add water, although that would probably mess with the pigment a little, wouldn't it? I don't know why I'm asking you viewers. I'm the one here with the paints who presumably knows what I'm doing. I'm just trying to find brushes that haven't been used on black. Because... Oh, I feel like that will affect... The color might be to affect things. Since all of my brushes are super cheap and terrible, we're not gonna get we're making it perfectly clean. Oh, okay. There we go. Three relatively new brushes. So that one's first, second, number one. So beta one. So it's a much thinner paint than the other two. Now, the true test of this, of course, is going to be covering other colors. So in that case, I think the metal and the wood are going to be the real, because you'll be able to see a big color difference. And this is a good test of how it applies to paper. Do a little curvy cue on the side there like that. Okay, so this is the white number one brush. Going in with the angled brush for white number two. This is, like it's definitely thicker than the other one. And it applies a lot more opaque right off the top. I don't know, this isn't the Hollow Taco channel. We, uh, we're not really evaluating one coat necessarily, although I'm kind of a one coat person. I don't picked up some of the black pigment from the, my pen. So that's one thing to know. But yeah, that covered a lot quicker. I'll do a streak like we did on the other. Okay. And then this is like, I can almost make the peaks with it. Like it's almost like an oobleck. Gesso, is that? Gesso? That's a thing, right? That's a thing people use. Oh god. Yeah, this is like, or like stiff peaks, as they always say in those cooking shows. Yeah, it still picks up the, the marker a little bit, but I mean, that's to be expected, and that's just me. I expect if I used a permanent marker rather than a water-based, because this is water-based paint, it wouldn't be a problem. Okay, so I'm going to put these aside. And let's see how that dries. So we've done the paper test now. Think that'll stay. <laughs> Who knows, really? All right, let's go cardboard next. So this is 
one, beta two, beta. I feel like just in terms of like initial impressions, I like number three best just because I like like a thicker paint. Oh my goodness, you can really see my <laughs> my poor lip. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'll end up liking it best. We'll see. Got a little bit of white paint on the table. It doesn't matter. This table is due for a repaint anyway. Let's see, the thin stuff dries really quickly. And like you can see, I'm just brushing on like thin, thin coats. It was like that, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Drying pretty quick too, though. Like, it's already pretty dry. Mm, we expect that from our acrylics. I'm just brushing on like, like a thin coat. So far, they're all kind of dry at the same rate. You know what's going to be interesting to do is to do a Sharpie test. I'm going to get a Sharpie. I'll show you what I mean by the Sharpie test. So, one of the things that we learned when I was doing site formal or we do these huge murals on paper, is that if you do your base outline in Sharpie, it becomes almost impossible to cover because Sharpie is just so pernicious. Let's go back in and see what doing a second coat does to the opacity. Okay, yeah, the second coat is where you really see the coverage difference starting to come through. To me, at least, the three, beta three just covers so much more quickly because, like, covers opaquely so much more quickly because it is thicker. Even like I'm, I'm doing dry brush now essentially, and it's massive coverage. Okay, I think that sharpie should be dry. Let's do wood next. So beta. 
one, beta two, beta three. Yeah, I feel like this gives you kind of the best sense of the opacity. So I'm trying to keep all of the brushes loaded up the same way. Although obviously with the thicker ones, they just like a dip loads it differently. Oh, well. The beta two swatch is going to be a lot bigger. Oops. <laughs> so see what I mean about that Sharpie being super pernicious? Okay. Let's see how. Three. Yeah. On the wood, I'm really starting to see a difference. Do you see how much of the black shows through the... Okay. Eh, there we go. This is going to take several coats to demonstrate, so I'm going to do over the line. go a little thicker with these. I'm trying to keep them the same thickness as each other. Like see that? Like two coats of the three and you're covering Sharpie. Whereas the others are like barely. And obviously the proof is going to be in how it dries, but like it's pretty. And like I'm, I'm trying to be as even handed with the paint as I can be. And you can definitely see a difference. We'll move on to metal. Can't really label the metal that well, so but we'll ooh. what we'll do. I'll do tape across the top. paint metal I don't really prime it and uh, clearly that's a problem for thing number one it does not want to stick let's see what pigment number two has to say about this pigment number two is holding much better I don't think there's any, like there's no oil or anything. There's no reason why one would react like that other than just it does not want to be put into metal. Pigment 3 is reacting a little bit like that. So something about pigment 2 
sticks to metal better. So that's that's one point in favor. So far, all the points have been in favor of beta three, but. This is where beta two, yeah, no. There's something about, see if it does it. Yeah. There's something about the formula in beta one and beta three that just doesn't like the metal at all. That's fascinating. Let's, let's put on another coat and see. Is it just a thickness thing? Did I do it too thick? No, because it's not... Like on three, you can sort of see it on the edges, like, going kind of crazy. No, two definitely... Two likes the metal a lot better than any of the others. So that's a point in its favor. Um... I was going to try like priming it on canvases, but I don't know that that's going to teach us anything more than the cardboard and the paper did. So I think what I'm going to test is how well this paint plays with others. So these are my yogurt top palettes. Some of them are a little messy. It's not really gonna make a difference. It'll be fine. Eh, don't fall. Okay. <laughs> I wish I had more space. Okay. So the two types of paint that I use most frequently are generic Americana acrylic. Uh, I got this, by, it's by Deco Art, they got it at the dollar store. If I buy again, I'll just buy whatever generic. It's just, it's just generic paint. Like, the brand doesn't really matter. It's in the shade True Blue. And I'm gonna try and put a similar sized dollop on each of my three palettes. Yeah. There we go. So that's my generic everyday paint. And then I have my special paint that I love a lot, which is Rio Tech Pearl Blue. I have this in uh, a red, a copper, and a silver as well. And so this is a pearlized paint. It's a lot thicker. And I hoard it a lot more. As you can see by the tiny little dollops I'm putting out. Okay. So, we have our palettes. We have this guy drying. See, as it dries, it's becoming even more obvious which one has the better two coat coverage. But again, see, like, two 
two just took the metal the best of all of these. One, there's something in one that really did not like the metal. I have no idea. What? Because obviously I don't know what's in any of these formulas. I am not privy to that information. Okay, let's take this off relatively. Should be relatively even with this. One third. If you're wondering what tape I'm using, it's the Scotch Expressions. They're like answer to the washi tape craze of 20, what was it, 2016 I think was when bullet journaling came in. It's like the super vogue, everyone wants to do it. Buzzfeed popularized it. Let's see what it was about when it came about. Okay. So, three, two, one. Shake it again. So, again, I'm going to try and mix an equal amount. Obviously the thinnest one pours super quick. Like this, like look at that, it has the almost the exact same consistency as my Rio Tech paint. This is how tech now to make things as even as possible I'm gonna go wash these three brushes before I start mixing colors
hunger smells weird and I don't know why. It's probably just because it's summer. Okay. So let's begin with number one. So it's basically the same consistency as the generic. They're mixing very easily. I'm not seeing any weird. Interactions. It's doing its job, as far as I can tell, which is making a lighter shade of blue. gonna go wash my brush. So why don't I bring back a cup of water so that I can wash future brushes here without having to go away. Probably do you love the viewers. So yes, we're all, all the washing is gonna be the same color really. So it's much thinner than the Rio Tuck. But again, I'm not seeing any adverse reactions to them being mixed. So like when I say adverse reactions, occasionally um, I have made the mistake of mixing up my alcohol-based paints with my water-based just because, you know, I was going quickly and I wasn't thinking. Um, and also because when I'm working with wood, I tend to try and mix my pigments with alcohol. So like, um, like rubbing alcohol, because the faster you can dry the paint on the wood, the less damage it's going to do to the wood. But really, that only works when you're 
using dry pigments. So occasionally I'll be using dry pigments with my rubbing alcohol. I'll go and grab a bottle of acrylic and just without thinking, I'll water it down with my rubbing alcohol and it creates this giant <laughs> bubbling mess, uh, which is completely unusual. It basically slimes it. Like if you've ever tried to make slime yourself when you add the boric acid, like that's basically what happens to an acrylic paint if you put rubbing alcohol into it. See right away because this is Rio Tech and it's a thicker paint. This is working up. It's quicker. Working up is a crochet term. It's not painting, but you understand what I'm saying, listeners. You you get me. I'm just trying to do. I'm trying to be very thin. Again, I'm trying to keep things as even as possible. However, I apply these, I'm gonna apply them all the same way. And I'm trying to as much as possible, although I'm being on my best behavior for the camera to a certain extent. I am trying to keep this true to how I would be painting if I use art. So, uh, sorry, if I'm doing art. So you can see like my coats, are probably a little bit thicker than what you're supposed to do because I'm an impatient person and I tend to do things. <sighs> Got a little on my shirt. It was probably not the smartest <laughs> idea to wear my favorite Saint Zane shirt in the world to do a painting video knowing how terrible I am at painting cleanly, but there we go. You know what? Mistakes were made and we just be living. We just have to be, we just have to be living. It's the, the theme of 2020, really. Mistakes were made, but we live in. Okay, there's Two point, not two point oh. Well, they're all technically white two point oh, but that's beta formula one. There we go. We move on to beta formula number two. So again, we're going to go in with the generic first and mix those. Yeah, the, the white is thicker than the blue, certainly. But it's not, it's not affecting how well they mix together, really. They seem, they seem fine. I'm not seeing any substantial color differences either. One thing that's probably gonna be interesting too at the end, if I can try to keep things a little contained on the palette will be to sort of see how much of the paint I actually had to use to get the square covered. Not that the areas are all that scientifically precise, but like this square is bigger than that square. So if I get this square covered with the same or less of the paint that I had to use for the other one, then that tells you something about coverage you can get with one formula versus another. I think this formula dries a lot quicker than the other one did. Maybe that has something to do with being mixed. Maybe I'm just doing it thinner, who knows. Hmm. Play through 
on the table. Usually everyone's like, well, I don't mind if I get it on the clothes, but I can't get it on the table. Well, I need to repaint this table, and like, soon. Um, so. Alright, there we go. I'd say I probably have roughly the same if, yeah, roughly the same amount of pigment left as A really interesting milky, milky water. This blue, it's like Romulan, Romulan ale, or that like blue milk stuff that Luke drinks in Star Wars. Let's see how this mixes with the Rio Tech. See, like that streaking is appealing to me in and of itself. It's kind of kind of moosey. So it mixes. This one mixes with the Rio Tech very differently than the other, but it doesn't seem to be. We haven't slimed it, so that's an improvement, certainly, over. What could be happening? But yeah, it's kind of mixed together. It's now, it's got the stiff white peaks. <laughs> I just got a great idea for testing the, the white after, once these ones are dry. I just had an awesome idea, a marvelous, terrible, awesome idea. So that's about how much is left. not a quadrant because obvious reasons this is sections of six so it would be a hexant or a, a third Okay, yeah, so we are seeing a big difference in the shade that comes out. I tried, as I showed you, to use as much 
as close as I could to the same amount of pigment of blue and white getting mixed to give a true reflection of how much one of them would change the color. And as you can see, this white is just taking that blue to such a paler shade. And it's also, I think, had an effect on the opacity. Like, look at that, like that is a completely different color. Whereas these two, even though one formula is thicker, certainly when it came to the coloring, I don't know, maybe it'll dry. I mean, paint dries darker, but I just like, I see a difference. I think, I think we're going to see a difference between the shades these two dry and it makes me very excited to see what's going to happen with the Rio Tech. Because I'm loving that pale aqua shade that we got there. Hoping we get something cool. Yeah, I, I think these are going to dry very different. Okay, let's mix up the Rio Tech. I think, well, no, I think, I think this is the same. Yeah, see these two are very much the same texture. very much like mixing two Rio Techs together. It's making soft peaks. Soft peaks. So pretty. I like it a lot. Okay. Let's let's get putting this on some canvas. Okay, I have two colors of pen that this reminds me of. Because I have one that's like the sky, it's the, the two of my Stadler markers that I have that this color difference reminds me of. Because like, at first glance you look at them and you're like, it's not, but like, this has more, like, water in it and one has more sky. I don't know if that... But like, water tends to have this more like greenish brightness to it, whereas the sky is more like, like you started with a black background and then just kind of tinted it with white. I don't know if that makes any sense. Probably does not, but...
so these are approximately dry, these top parts. I don't know if we're actually going to get to the Ikea furniture, folks. I think, I think, I think I overestimated, um, or underestimated. I thought this was going to take a lot less time than it has, which isn't a bad thing, honestly. So the last thing I'm going to do is these are mostly dry. So we're going to do some Bob Ross. We're going to add some happy little clouds. And yeah, yeah, we're going to add clouds to the top part. I haven't decided if we're going to add anything to these, but okay. So coming back to this palette. So this was one, this was two, this was three. I'm going to take my sponge. I'm going to go in to number one. Try and get a nice cloud. Yeah, that's, that's dry enough. So I'm going to take my sponge. I'm going to go into number two. Take my sponge. It's gonna go into number three. Obviously, the thicker pigment doesn't sponge the same as the thinner pigment. So I think, although also we're getting a little bit of interference from how wet one type of paint was versus the other. So not a true perfect test of their sponging ability, but we can get a truer test by uh, not I was hoping not to use that much, but okay. Oopsie. Thin paint pours more quickly. Try and do some uh, sea foam across the top with each. So sense how each of them plays with wet or dry. Yeah. So obviously the thicker paint this just gets soaked right up by the, the sponge. I'm gonna blend everything out a little bit. Just for later. I'm gonna bring this wood back 
So as you can see, now that it's dry, the black is peeking through number three, but it's miles away better coverage. Let's bring this metal back because this is the interesting one. So yeah, something about number one didn't want to stick to the metal. Two and three did. Three, you can see a little bit around the edges of that, like almost like a hydrophobic. Not, I mean not, but so two is the best coverage on the metal. They all kind of perform the same on, on paper, on marker. And on the cardboard, you can kind of see the opacity of two and three. It's kind of superior to one. But when it comes to sponging, the one I liked working best with was number number one, really, because it just goes on so much. Like, it's not, you don't put the sponge in and then all of your paint is suddenly gone. kind of playing, which I think is kind of the point, really. Smudge a little, a little bit of the, the top ones in here. Kind of going for a clouds and oceans type feel. Oh yeah, they dry super quick. For a, uh, a stormy seas kind of thing. We'll see. We'll see how it works out when it's dried and I take the tape off. Most of my sponge painting techniques are from doing concrete texture on a wood floor. Like when I used to do the theater. Just kind of blend it, but I don't want to blend it too much. so long to buy sponges. Sponges make everything so much better. I'm gonna do some straight white just up at the top so that you can really see a gradation. There we go. That is my experience 
of the Culture Hustle White 2.0 beta test samples. Thank you so much for watching. You have been watching Wildcard Wednesday, a Story Ranger Presents production. Tonight we played with some paints and had a lot of fun. We did not build any IKEA furniture. I apologize for that, but maybe in a future video. And now my hand looks like the sky. <laughs> Um, you can find links to support the channel down below. You can see any of these uh, art streams that I've re-uploaded over on youtube.com slash storyranger. You can catch me on Twitter at storyranger. Um, gift me a game on Steam at storyranger. I don't know. I'm storyranger everywhere. If you want to contact me, that's great. Uh, buy my merch from my Rug Bubble. Support me on Patreon. Do live your life. Do whatever you're going to do. Um, do smart sometime. All right, thanks for watching.